Thank you very much indeed. And uh, let me, um, first of all, uh, thank uh, Poland's Foundation for Sustainable Energy for uh, inviting me to address you this morning. Uh, as Denmark's ambassador to Poland, I'm deeply, deeply honored to be given this uh, opportunity. Uh, I'm also very pleased that the embassy um, is among the honorary patrons uh, of this conference. Uh, we're proud that we can work with you, that uh, we can be your partners, uh, and to support the excellent work that you're doing, like this uh, conference. Now, I see this uh, special uh, partnership between the embassy and the Fund for Sustainable Energy as a recognition uh, of the pioneering role that Denmark uh, is playing in the field of uh, offshore energy, renewables, and energy efficiency. But it also reflects that right now, as I speak, a unique window of opportunity is opening for a broader and more comprehensive Polish-Danish energy partnership in the Baltic Sea area. Now, a major component in such a partnership will, of course, be the Baltic Pipe Project. Um, this project will allow transmission of gas from Norway uh, to the Danish and Polish markets, uh, as well as to end users in neighboring countries. It will consist of approximately 800 kilometers of new pipelines, including the expansion of the Polish gas infrastructure. And if the green light is being given, uh, the, it is projected that the, uh, this uh, project will be on stream by the end of uh, 2022. Now, this new pipeline, if uh, built, will increase Europe's gas transmissions capacity by up to 10 billion cubic meters of gas per year. In comparison, uh, the total Danish gas consumption for 2016 was 2.5 billion cubic meter, meters. So this is really a massive infrastructure project. A feasibility study has shown that the Baltic Pipe Project can bring significant socio-economic benefits to Poland, Denmark, and the Baltic and Central and Eastern European regions. So it will be a win-win for both Denmark and Poland. It is also an important European project the European Commission has included the Baltic Pipe on its list of key infrastructure projects that are of common interest to Europe. And this is due to the essential role that the Baltic Pipe could play in contributing to the development of Europe's internal market for gas and the strengthening of Euro uh, the European Union's security of supply. The investment decision in Denmark on the Baltic Pipe is expected later this year. And if realized, the Baltic Pipe will open up a totally new era in the Polish-Danish energy partnership. For the first time, there will be a physical connection between our two countries uh, just across the Baltic Sea and our gas transmission networks will be fully integrated. But why should we limit the Polish-Danish energy partnership to gas transmission pipelines? Um, and the answer is that there's no good reason to limit ourselves to uh, cooperate on gas transmission. And this is really my basic message to you this morning. We should use this window of opportunity to develop a much broader Danish-Polish energy partnership. Such a partnership should also involve wind power, other renewables, and energy efficiency. It would be a clear win-win for, for both Denmark and Poland. And it would also reduce Poland's dependency on imported energy, just as much as the Baltic Pipe project. Poland, as we know, is not only importing natural gas, Poland is also a major importer of coal. Now, the good news is that we don't have to start from scratch if we want to build this new partnership. Danish companies are in front globally when it comes to uh, offshore wind farms. The leading Danish company, Ørsted, has built more offshore wind farms than any other company worldwide. Vestas is another Danish pioneer in the wind power industry. Uh, they are a global leader in the wind power plant solutions market and has supplied a major part of the capacity uh, installed onshore in Poland. Well, the success of Danish companies in the field of wind power is, however, also a success for Poland. Uh, many of the giant steel foundations for offshore wind turbines that are installed by Danish companies globally are ma uh, actually made here in Poland, more precisely in Stettin. And many of the turbine towers uh, are made in Gdansk, and many of the underwater to transmission cables are made close to Katowice. So this is the untold story that Poland is actually already part of Denmark's global success in the wind uh, power industry. So we have this partnership already. We just need to to uh, 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 develop it. 
And there is really a huge untapped potential for taking this partnership to the next level. And this potential is just waiting to be unleashed if political and regulatory decisions in Poland are made. Development of onshore wind in Poland has come to an almost standstill for reasons that uh, are well known to everybody in the industry. Denmark is ready to share our experience in addressing some of the regulatory issues that have made life for land-based wind power in Poland extremely difficult. And you might ask yourself, what can Denmark offer in more specific terms? Well, we are, for instance, ready to share our experience on how to stimulate local acceptance by involving local communities and their citizens in land-based wind energy projects. We are also ready to be Poland's partner in developing offshore wind in Polish waters. Denmark's largest wind farm is, uh, as some of you might know, under construction on a reef in the Baltic Sea called Krias Flak. It is not only going to be our biggest wind farm, it will have one of the world's lowest prices of produced energy. The winning bid in the tender was only 49.9 euro per megawatt. This is among the lowest cost for offshore wind power globally. And this reflects the dramatic fall in cost for sea-based wind power, almost a reduction of 60% in just three years. And this has made um, wind power at sea very, very competitive. And the good news is that uh, it is projected that cost uh, will drop even further. This new uh, massive wind farm will have a capacity to supply almost a fourth of all Danish households. And it's actually located very close to the maritime border between uh, Denmark and Poland in the Baltic Sea. And there's no reason to believe that the wind is blowing any less on the Polish side of the border. Conditions are just as good on your side of uh, the maritime border, and this immense source of energy is just waiting to be utilized. Danish companies are ready to work with you uh, on this as part of a new energy partnership. The potential for a new partnership is, however, not limited just to wind energy. In the field of energy efficiency, there is a strong legacy of Danish-Polish cooperation. Poland is a major uh, manufacturer of thermal insulation. Uh, this is not least due to the pioneering technologies that the Danish company Rockwool has brought here through major investments over the last couple of decades. The Danish manufacturer of windows, Velox, has played a crucial role in making Poland a European superpower when it comes to energy efficient windows. You might also know that Danfoss Group, a Danish provider, a global provider of technologies and automation used in areas such as heating, cooling, controlling electrical motors and compressors, and they've built a very strong manufacturing presence here in Poland in the last 25 years. Both Denmark and Poland are strong in urban district heating systems, and we work together in this field already. Now, all these uh, existing partnerships, they did not emerge because some politicians or diplomats said they should uh, involve. Uh, they emerged simply because of free markets, the European Union, foreign direct investments, and because of the comparative advantages of Polish and Danish market access in the energy sector. When these comparative advantages are combined in partnerships, it makes for a very, very strong combination. Thus, there are strong and robust partnerships already, and we can build on this if we want to develop a broad-based and comprehensive Danish-Polish energy partnership that goes beyond gas transmission. The embassy is ready, Danish companies are ready, and I hope that your conference this morning will also uh, make a contribution in this uh, direction. Thank you very much for inviting me and thank you for your attention and I wish you a very successful conference. <laughs>